Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's episode of the Search Podcast. So, uh, for today, I wanted to talk about um, something that's a little bit quicker, and it's it, it may not have big clinical implications, but it's something to think about, and that's um, supraglottic airways and LMAs and things like that. And by and large. I think uh, laryngeal mask airways have changed the game for us in so many different ways, it's not even funny. Uh, paramedics using utilities such as uh, combi vents, um, tools of those nature, uh, us as physicians doing very short surgeries, being allowed to use an LMA for that quick hernia or you know a quick sort of skin excision type of situation or even uh, slightly bigger surgeries like open appendectomies. I know we don't always do open appendectomies. We almost never do them anymore. It's a lost science. Probably in the next five years, we'll start to give antibiotics for our pen, for all appendicitis cases, but it's just another example. LMAs have also saved me a couple of times when I've had difficult can't intubate, can't ventilate situations, and I just needed to temporize, normalize the oxygen, and treat the hypercapnia. And, you know, it does give you that time frame to be able to establish a more definitive airway, certainly. And um, I think, by and large, LMAs have really changed the game for us. But every now and then, you come across a couple of articles that makes you wonder. And although they are the bestest, every now and then you read something that makes you think about things. And one of the things is that, uh, you know, in the human body, uh, every organ, vessel, or structure has a neighbor. And sometimes we forget that uh, our LMA sits directly across the thyroid and the carotid sheath, which puts into a critical area with a nerve that can get compressed sometimes, and a blood vessel that can get compressed sometimes. And sometimes that's not good. And there are some implications. And one of the things I came across was um, a case of severe bradycardia upon uh, induction with an LMA. And there, it's a hypothetical narrative, but it does make sense when you read the paper. And I suggest that everybody does. It's open access. Almost 100% of what I put up here is open access, by the way. That's why I keep putting up these papers. I think that it's important that you all go back and read the actual paper and maybe comment on what you think, uh, especially on YouTube where we've been getting more and more comments lately. And another thing that makes you wonder is if, if it can cause a bradycardia, then potentially it, it can cause restricted blood flow in a cardiac arrest situation, which may happen in a can't ventilate, can't intubate situation. And when you look at that, there also seems to be a similar effect with the combi tube, the king tube, and the LMA, and that during CPR for porcine models, so these are pig-based models, swine models. Uh, during CPR, we do have a reduction in flow. And the combi tube seems to have the highest reduction in flow uh, over the others. And th this flow seems to be uh, restricted to cerebral blood flow, which is uh, somewhat worrisome. Now, whether this is clinically significant or not, in the case of the combi tube, from what you're seeing here, and this has been reproduced by a different paper too, by the way, it seems to be um, definitely significant physiologically. But I can't tell you whether or not it's clinically significant because we don't use LMAs a lot in this situation. We use it for a very, very, very small number of patients. But perhaps we should be cognizant. And then ultimately, whenever we're using it during a resuscitation, we're usually using it in patients who are very sick and need to be oxygenated to keep them alive. And so I would argue that you really have no choice. In addition to the fact that, you know, porcine anatomy or swine anatomy of the upper airway, although it mirrors human anatomy, may be more reflective of smaller airways potentially rather than bigger ones with more abnormal anatomy. So watch this space. I don't know if it's clinically significant in any way, but it's a uh, food for thought. What I'm more concerned with is its effect on central line insertion. So having your carotid sheath pushed to the side from the inside of the gullet might make central lines a little bit harder to do. And they've done this study where they calculated the overlap index. Uh, they have like 15 different diagrams, but everybody should read the study because it's, it's pretty cool. 
and they did simulated insertions, all right, during routine uh, procedures uh, with patients who were intubated with an ET tube versus an LMA. And they calculated basically the angle and the amount of overlap between the internal jugular and the carotid. And what they found was that to get a good view, they had to get far more angulation than they should require. And that it took a little bit longer, and obviously it's more technically difficult to do, as you can see here, comparing uh, figure 3A and 3B. You know, your line of sight is just not okay, right? It's, it's, it's not ideal. You can overshoot very easily and puncture the carotid by mistake, go through and through. You can even do it distally if, if you haven't gotten an excellent view there, right? And apparently, um, this seems to be manifest almost all anime cases. And apparently, you know, with some head rotation, you can't get a better view, but it's, it's by no means optimized um, in terms of the overlap. And this seems to be peep dependent. Uh, the more peep, uh, the more overlap you have. And so at the end of the day, you, you know, I can't say I will never use an LMA because I love them. And the evidence shows that in can't intubate, can't ventilate situations, they're okay to use. And ultimately, you need to oxygenate for the cerebral blood flow to be useful. But I would say that if I do put in the LMA, I'd like to establish a difficult airway or a more definitive airway in a difficult airway context earlier rather than later. And I would need to recognize that an LMA and a central line insertion might be something that's difficult and to watch out for a sort of vasovagal effect whenever the LMA is first inflated during routine surgery. Uh, this is Saud Al-Zaid. Thank you for listening. And please like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you think and please suggest more topics. Have a good day.